Ooh, I think we're live <laughs> and we're live lot. with, yes, and with one of my favorite people in tennis. His name is Peter Freeman from Crunch Time Coaching. If you haven't checked out his stuff yet, you definitely want to do that. But super excited to be back on live. Like I've really come to love the live format. Uh, it's just been so much fun. You know, we started it off last Sunday with Pete and it was just amazing feedback on it. And then we went on and did one with Gigi. We did one with Dean Hollingworth on fitness. We did one with Zoran Stojkovic on the mental game. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss one there. And then uh, now we're back again with Pete to talk about uh, the top 10 takeaways from Tennis Summit 2020. Uh, over 12,000 of you joined. It's just been an incredible ride. So uh, first off, hi to everybody. Uh, please type in your name and where you are from in the chat. Uh, if you can, that'd be awesome. And big hello to my friend Pete. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I can't wait for the top 10 list, but we awesome. can't go to the top 10 list, Maravon, until I play you a little something. Guys, if you've not been paying attention, the first one I put Billy Joel on, and he had no idea who Billy Joel was. Then we start with Let's Go Crazy by Prince. No clue who Prince, either that was a Prince song, and doesn't really know any Prince music. Now, I'm going to play this for him. And if this young man does not know who this is, I think everybody should give him a virtual slap in the face. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Do you yeah, recognize I this iconic music? He doesn't know it. No, I know, look, I, I have heard it many times. I have great respect for whoever created the song. What is it from? Uh, Why is it so famous? Uh, is it like an intro to a sports? Like, is it like football? Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, my God, guys. You know, that we're gonna is terrible. Into, we're going to get into the content, but, you know, Pete just had to bust me. Um, I didn't use the other term. Uh, I just really need to work on my musical knowledge and everything. I mean, I'm well versed in uh, hip hop and uh, you know, say electronic music, but not those classics. So, oh my God, let me ask you this question: Do you know who Michael Jordan is? Have you? I heard sure of do. I sure do. Very good cricket player. No, I'm Ooh. kidding. <laughs> wow! Everybody, go watch the Last Dance on ESPN. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of that being posted. I'm just saying, Hey everyone. So shout out, uh, to Mark Schwartz who named chariots of fire, uh, Karen, what's going on from Louisville, Kirk for from Newport beach, California, Abishai from Baltimore, Maryland, Brad, Gregory, Mark, a lot and of she Shelly, who I've actually given some lessons to. She came out to Cincinnati with us too. And she's in Marietta. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Don, Dave, John. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, Gene too. I remember your name. Yes. Callaway Piano. So, Karen, uh, you see that? Karen says she taught Michael Jordan's kids. What? Yeah. Taught Dang. them what? Tennis? What did you teach them? Karen? Ah, like that to know. It's amazing. Yeah. Karen okay. with the power. Sorry, I'm really bad at dad jokes. Okay. So uh, we're... <laughs> We're here today. Um, somehow I'm still standing. As you can see, I have a, a stress zit here or whatever you want to call it. Maybe I should just do the whole thing like this. But oh, no. You know what happens. And uh, really excited to get into my top 10 tips. And, you know, it's it's been a little stressful this week, but I was able to actually review uh, a bunch of the presentations. You know, we had a lot of on-court lessons. We had quite a bit of... Um, Point, you know, point analysis and master classes, like interviews too, uh, more on court than ever before, which uh, like we like you should check Pete's out in, in particular too. the perfect serve practice. Amazing. Best practice. one of the whole seminar, really. Yeah. Yeah. Better than what Pete wanted to do, which for everybody, nude slice serving. Yes, <laughs> that is exactly what Pete proposed. And thankfully, he did not do it. Uh, that is true. He asked a survey of what should be in this uh, tennis summit. And I just thought I'd play with him and type in nude slice serving. Yeah, right, play with them. I'm pretty sure you wanted to do it, but that would have been <laughs> a tough work for my editor. Um, but but so I wanna get into these uh, these top 10 tips of mine, and obviously Pete will chime in as well, and I really appreciate Pete joining in. As I, as I said, I have great respect for Pete and you know all the hard work he's doing, it's incredible. So uh, 
I just want to get into the first one for you. And what that is, is loading the back leg. Um, and this is a tip that I got from Dr. Mark Kovacs. And uh, as you can tell, I'm, you know, I have some notes here, but um, I think a lot of people don't load the back leg enough. Um, if you look at a lot of amateur tennis players, what they're doing is that you'll see a lot of the weight um, primarily on their front leg. And so, you know, it's on their front leg and then they're trying to propel into the ball. So there's no weight shift from the back to the front. And you hear the, the, the uh, famous phrase, uh, load and explode. And, and so the key to really a great serve, um, you know, as proven scientifically by, by people like Dr. Mo Mark Kovacs is to load the, the, the back leg. And his presentation was awesome. Um, he, he, he included uh, a couple exercises for all of you to do to, um, to, to be able to better load the back leg. And as proof, I actually tried one of his drills where you actually lift your front leg so you're on your back leg and then you serve. And hmm. I actually found that I hit a more powerful and balanced serve with one leg, with my only my back leg. And so um, I just want to highly encourage you all to, to check out that presentation. If you have the all access pass, you can check it out anytime you want. And uh, to really load it, to load the back leg. And then that way you're going to have a lot of power on your serve. Um, so Pete, I'm uh, just curious. You know, you're also a master of, of sir, of you know, teaching the serve. And you, you, what's that? I'm a master of load. You anyway, are. You're a, you're master of load. Can you blow me up? Because I want to show something. Because it's yes. actually very interesting. So if you could, okay. Oh uh, yeah, I like it. So guys, it's interesting that he was saying that because I'm doing this 30 day tennis technique and fitness challenge where people are saying their videos. And I'm seeing one after the next. It's, it's interesting. You know, you can hear something, but not get it. So I want to make sure you really get it because the people are sending in their videos. They're getting set. They're, they're really focused on their non, you know, uh, on their upper body. So they're usually getting here to nice unit turn. But look how much I'm standing up. And when you use your legs, what he's talking about is really load, not just bend, but I actually feel like you're coming backwards a little bit too. Like look at the difference of power. If I'm coming here from here, lots of people just set like this and then they go and they hit and they're just doing this, right? But if I'm coming and I'm going way back here, look at the power that I can really bring. Like you see, I'm almost like attacking the computer now. Yeah, and take it the easy. same thing with the serve too. You know, you can use your legs and just kind of go back, rock back a little bit and then start to really transfer to the front leg or you can really – load way back here, get down like you're going to sit in a chair. That, that's basically the, probably the, the biggest tip is whether you're going to hit a forehand, you want to pretend that you got to sit back in a chair. Whether you're going to hit a serve, you want to pretend like you got to sit back in a chair and really use that to shoot yourself up. So I just wanted to illustrate Maribon's point there so that you really understood how important that is and that I'm getting video proof all the time on a daily basis that people are not actually doing that. So I'm done, Maribon. You can take me away again. Yeah, sure. Sure thing here. And yeah, Brad, oh my gosh, ouch. He's saying, what's your two, two legs serve like? But no, seriously, I mean, like if you're not properly loading, um, you know, with two legs and in, in a lot of cases, you, you, you might have a better serve with one leg. And so at one point I was definitely finding the issue with me was that I was like too much on my front leg uh, when I was serving. So once I made that adjustment, kept practicing it. Um, then obviously, you know, now the two leg serve is, is, uh, has more power than the one leg, but, uh, definitely highly encourage you to practice this. Cause we see that with a lot of players for sure. Uh, that's a big issue. So, uh, number two, if, uh, if I can go into that, Pete is actually comes from you. Um, so I, I checked out, um, I made the list. you did. Yeah. So I checked out, uh, Peter's, uh, fantastic session on the perfect serve practice and what I really like is how he really provides you um, with direction. And specifically, one of the things that Pete mentioned was um, actually practicing your serve under pressure. And so it's really cool and, and fun, too, to actually implement these serve games where what Pete did is he put a towel on the court and then you have to decide, you know, which side of the towel, which side of the box do I want to serve on. And then you practice your serve. And then um, if you make the serve on the side that you've decided to hit the serve on, then you actually win the point. 
And uh, if you don't make it, on, then you lose the point. So say you, you make a serve, 15 love, then you miss the serve, but you hit it on the wrong side or out or in the net, and it's 15 all and so forth. And so you play games like this, and this really helps out, I feel, and proven by Pete you know, and his players that uh, it'll help you serve under pressure. It'll help your serve direction immensely because, of course, there's even um, the, you know, some players who will go out and not really – focus on their placement at all. So I really like this drill um, from Pete, among many of the other things that was in that video on the perfect serve practice, like um, putting out towels and serving, and that'll help with your balance and everything. So Pete, uh, I don't know if you have any other input on, on that uh, particular part of your presentation. I've got a lot of input. Blow me up. I want to show something. <laughs> You're already blown up, Pete, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what Maribon's talking about, this is, this is a service box right here, okay? And so you would take some tennis balls, and you're not trying to actually hit the tennis balls. You're actually trying to make your, your tennis ball, your serve, land in between the line and this area. Like, this could be a target. And so you can either give yourself two tries or one try. Like, you have to make it like either every time or two in a row or one out of two, however you want to do it. And, and, uh, and when you do that, you win a point. And... So the idea of practicing under pressure is so huge. And um, again, we started tonight with the Chicago Bulls because I binge watched the last dance last night. And it's basically about the Chicago Bulls last season. And it reminded me of actually this kind of way of practicing in that I'm not telling you guys to go practice like a professional athlete and to absolutely torture yourself but I think also we have like our practice over here and then we got our matches over here and we feel great in practice because often we don't add that much, um, you know, pressure to it for lack of a better, you know, we don't add that much pressure to it. We're not nervous. We're not uh, scared of the outcome a little bit. And when you look at any sports team that has done great things, they're afraid to go to practice. Like the practice is a lot of times harder than the game. You know, everybody on that team who played with Michael Jordan said every practice, Michael Jordan brought it. But even the scarier part was there was no one who could take a day off because like he's working so hard. And, and if I slack at all, he's going to be all over me. So they were like nervous in practice. So when they go out there and play at the highest level, you know, th that's that's not so bad. It's probably worse to get brow beaten by Michael Jordan, right, where he's yelling at you in practice that it would be even in a game because he probably, you know, has to hold stuff back for the cameras. So what I like to do is with that drill is to come up with a number, like I've got to make eight out of 10 or seven out of 10 or whatever it is. And then also give myself a punishment. Now it could be as simple as I'm going to do 10 jumping jacks, just so you know, you have some consequence or you might like really, you know, if you want to get yourself, you're like, I have to sprint, to the end of the fence and back five times in a row, you know, so you feel that pressure and then you know that you're executing under pressure. So add that to your practice. I'm done. Take me away. Fantastic, Pete. Actually, do you want to take me away? You know, <laughs> just me to, you know, no, that's fine. All right. I'll go. I'm sorry. I have like, you know, bad jokes. Um, all right. Number three. Um, this is something that is is huge uh, for for players, and we we had the legendary Gigi Fernandez on um, the summit, and I've had her on my podcast too. And so she has won seventeen Grand Slams. So I really think that we should definitely listen to what she's talking about. And so on her session, which she actually had one uh, session uh, on, I believe Tuesday, and then also we did a live session, which was super popular, just like Pete's. And so we talked about volleys and and you know some big mistakes that players are making and one big one and i'm sure pete can attest to this is that uh, a lot of players are, are taking their their rackets too far back and so volleys are supposed to be short and compact and see i see uh pete's uh confirming that they have to be short and compact i mean the first and most obvious thing is when you're taking it back like that then you have a lot less time so as you when you play for example players who are ripping the ball um, you're going to catch the, the volley very late. Right. And, uh, you, you know, one other thing with, with, uh, with the volley that, that Gigi mentioned too, is it's, it's not, it's not a ground stroke. You know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be coiling like you're hitting a forehand or a backhand. And something interesting that you said, said too, is that 
it's almost like you're really you're not trying to hit the ball per se like on a ground stroke you're really trying to like let the ball come to the racket and then, uh, you know, in a sense, pushing it. So um, that, that was one great tip that Gigi gave us. And, and when we analyzed volleys together, which was super cool, uh, we actually, uh, we asked my audience to, uh, for five volunteers to, uh, to, to send in their volleys, uh, video clips of their volleys. And within five, within 10 minutes, we had like 20 entries. So it was already done, but that was one of the biggest thing we found on, on the volleys. It just, the take backs were too big. So Pete, any, uh, any thoughts on that? Blow it up, blow it up. Oh, by the way, they, some people said that the light was a little bright where they couldn't see you. So I'm going to monitor this. Um, okay. to let you know. Okay. All right. So guys, I, Oh, I see what happened. Cause when I do that, it doesn't look good. All right. So I got to stay low. That's good. It makes me stay low anyway. There you go. So one thing that I have talked about, and I think that this is one thing that, that tennis pros have kind of messed up. So I'm glad Gigi was talking about it, is that the first move is so key. And, and usually what you're taught is the first move on a volley is to turn your shoulders. We see if I'm doing that, if the net's this way, and I'm just naturally gotten this habit of it's a shoulder turn move, look how far my racket's starting back. So I've got to go all this way just to get out in front. If someone you know, hits a bullet at me and my natural response is always this, then this. Now I'm hitting a lot of late volleys. And when you're hitting late volleys, most of the time your racket face is too open. Like that ball is going to go way out. You see that? That's your trajectory it's going to go on. So you want to think of yourself more like a shortstop and your hands are right here. You don't want to be way out here, right in here, bent, but it's still out away from the rib cage. And what you want to think about is that you've got your first move, you're really good with your hands, Right. So, you, so if someone hits the ball really hard at you, you can just be here and do that, right? It's coming hard, that. Now, if it's coming slower and you want to put a little pop on it, you can go here, then turn the shoulders and pop, okay? But get really good at just moving the hand, moving the hand. So be relaxed here, not holding the racket too tight. Relax so you can catch, relax so you can catch, and then pop through. Done. Sweet. I'm going to turn this light off. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, let's check it out. But uh, awesome. Thanks, as, as always, for your input there, Pete. Love it. And um, so number four, uh, I really love this session. I mean, Greg Lasour from Online Tennis Instruction, he really brings some great quality stuff every year. I mean, you know, all the people that I pick, I try to bring back the best ones. And that's why you see Pete, obviously, um, and rotate a bit. But Greg, uh, really great stuff. Um, and he his uh, session was actually on serve returns and what i really liked about his session which i believe was on tuesday as well is he showed you both how you, you're supposed to operate on returns with regards to your footwork and then also your um your your arm your, your take back unit turn and so forth the upper body uh, i should say and so what i really liked about um you know the overall concept here is that you really need to practice your um serve return footwork um, and he gives you a really great step-by-step -step guide on exact footwork that you need to have great, great returns. And I'll just summarize it, which the way he, he, he describes it is to, um, you have one step forward, you split, and then you want to pivot out in the direction of the ball. And believe it or not, uh, I do see a lot of players who are not following this, uh, step-by-step -step process for hitting returns and, um, you know, what, what happens when you don't have good return footwork, you don't, especially that split step, um, then you're, you're going to be on the defensive. You're, you're going to hit balls late. Um, you're going to be, you're having your weight falling backwards, which then, especially in doubles, that's a huge telltale sign for, for the net player. If they're savvy enough to just, just go and poach and pick off an easy ball that doesn't have much on it. And, um, and on top of that, too, um, you know, I just want to mention that he talks about again a very compact um, take back on the return, obviously, because you already have a lot of speed coming towards you, and you don't want to hit the ball late. So, um, you know, so this is kind of a uh, I don't think this is the right word, um, but like a emulgation. Emulg no, that's not right. A uh, combination of like the footwork and and the upper body work. But um, I, I really think on the whole that people are not practicing the serve return enough. And this is a great time to, to practice um, these sorts of things through shadow swinging and, and your footwork at home. And it's very easy to do. Um, you just have to be consistent. And if you haven't yet, 
um, you really need to check out Greg Lesur's, uh serve return session. So any thoughts on that, Pete? It's very good. Well, first of all, Maribon's serious when he says he only brings back the best. Every time that we have one of these each year, he gets us all in a room and he has like a rose ceremony, except for he hands out rackets. And if you get a racket, you get to come back. And if you don't get a racket, you don't get invited back to the tennis summit. And this year, interestingly enough, Paul Anacone on the chopping block just made it. Just <laughs> okay. All right. I do. I do have something. First of all, what he's saying about practicing the return of serve is so important. The footwork, because everybody takes it for granted. You really don't think about it being footwork technique. And it totally is. It totally is. And I see a lot of people, they're staying too straight up. And so then they get blown back real easy. So you want to you want to get down here again, kind of like the shortstop or, or just kind of, I also think about the, the return of serve, like your cornerback in the uh, NFL and someone's coming like a running back's running at you and you're not the biggest guy, but you got to, you got to get low to the ground and, and attack and tackle this football player running at you. Cause, cause you know, that serve is coming at you very aggressively. And if you're in a passive stance, and you want more time because it's coming so fast. So you want to keep waiting, give yourself more time. Does this look familiar? This is when you end up hitting late. What you want to do is treat the offense with your own offense, but be short and compact. So you want to get down here and get the mindset like this is coming at me fast, but I'm going to go to it too. And that's where that, that uh, step forward happens. So as I see the toss getting ready to go up and leave the hand, this is where I'm going to take my step forward and then right before the ball is hit, right is going to be hit out of the racket. This one I'm going to split. And then especially if someone's got a good serve, it's a bang, bang play. And then the big no-no, and we kind of talked about this in the volley, is lots of people treat the return of serve like a ground stroke. To me, it's in between a ground stroke and a half volley. So you want to make sure that, as Greg Lasore said, you're always going out to the side right here of whatever side it's coming to. Once you land – you want to land and be here if you treat it like a regular ground stroke where it's racket back, step forward, and hit. That's way too much movement, and you're not going to be in time. You're going to be hitting back here and in a fight with the ball. But if you're here, here, and then there through, now you can take all that power and put it right back on your opponent and go, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, you remind me of the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. I love it. Love the enthusiasm. It's amazing. So one presentation that just wowed a lot of people, I actually got multiple emails on this that said that this was the best presentation they had watched in 30 years. Um, I guess they hadn't watched Pete's presentation, <laughs> but, but still, you know, it, people have different needs and so forth, but this one was about watching the ball by Faisal Hassan, uh, USPT a pro. <laughs> That's right. And that illustrates what you're seeing by Pete is that, um, you know, a lot of times you'll hear coaches and players, whoever to say, watch the ball. Right. But then what does that mean? OK. And uh, Faisal did an amazing job of breaking down uh, what this means. And I'm not you know, I'm not going to sit for like 40 minutes and break it down like all the way like he did, obviously, because he had a lot of accompanying drills and many, um, you know, little points about it and so forth. But what he talks about is three main elements, which is tracking the ball, which is the ball is coming toward you, zooming in on the ball when the ball bounces on your side to when you hit it, and then scanning the opponent. So when when the the uh, when you when the ball is coming towards the opponent, you actually want to be scanning the opponent and not the ball, so that you can pick up, um, as he calls it, the four P's, which are postures, position, preparation, and patterns. And so when somebody says you're, you know, you need to watch the ball, the great thing about the, the presentation from Faisal is you can figure out, okay, what part of this tracking, zooming, or scanning am I having trouble with? Is it the tracking when the ball is coming towards me? Then there's specific drills and things you can do to help with that. Is the part of the, the watching the ball that you're having trouble with the zooming in when the ball bounces to when you have to hit it? If so, there's drills for that. Again, that's all in the presentation from Faisal Hassan um, on day two. Or do you have uh, some sort of trouble uh, when the ball uh, is going towards your opponent? Maybe you're watching the ball too much and not the opponent, so you're missing out on all these cues. 
So this is an amazing way, I think, and a lot of people thought on how to break down what watching the ball is, figuring out which part of this three-part phase am I having trouble with, and then narrowing in on that one phase, or maybe it's multiple, but in a lot of cases, there's one phase that's giving you the most trouble with, and to work on that phase. And so I thought that was really, really good. And um, yeah, that that's an amazing presentation you also check out. So uh, if I, um, Pete, what do you think? I think it's great. And I, th I think to answer your question, I think most people, the problem becomes on watching the other side and knowing what's about to happen, okay? I think as tennis players, we get what's called sucker punched too much. You know what I mean? Like you're like someone punched you like, oh, I, ne I never even saw that coming. Well, that's what we have happen in tennis. And, and sucker punching doesn't just necessarily mean that someone hit like a winner right by you. Like probably the biggest sucker punch in tennis is when someone hits a weak ball and it bounces twice and two times in front of you and you never even ran for it. It's not even a drop shot. It's just like a bad shot on their end that you really should have, instead of you saying, oh, that was so lucky, you should have recognized that, that that was about to be short even before they hit it. And you just be up there like, you know, clean up, clean up the point. And so what you got to start thinking of is that you're like a boxer. OK, and you got to be acutely aware of the dance that you're in with your opponent and the position that your hits are giving them. Like whenever I'm hitting a shot, I like to think about it like a punch in boxing. And as I'm as I have my mindset of what I want to do with the ball. And then as I'm hitting it, I'm like saying to myself, like, oh, yeah, like I connected. This is a golden hit. So after I, this comes through and comes off my racket, like really pay attention to them to see if I hurt them. You know, if I see them get a late start to the ball, I might cheat in a step or two. You know, if I hit a great shot and I look up and I'm excited and all of a sudden I see them and they're in good balance. Now I figure, oh, that was a great shot by me, but didn't hurt my opponent. Right. So I'm probably just going to be in a neutral rally. So really pay attention to the other side. Really, for me, it happens, especially when I'm able to give the first blow on the serve. I'm looking, and as I'm connecting with that serve, I'm thinking, how good is this serve as it's hitting? How good is it feel off the racket? You know, is it going to go to a corner and hit a line? If all those things are happening, yes, in my head, I'm really looking to see if I hurt them right away because then I might cheat in and take advantage. I might even turn a play that I wasn't playing on certain volley. I might just do a sneak attack certain volley. So I think that's a huge skill that a lot of players can get much better at. Love it. Awesome, Pete. Thank you again for that. And um, yeah, I just want to also mention that we'll be giving some prizes out at the end of this live stream. So definitely stay tuned for that. Marabon's giving away one of these, going to buy you guys one of these massage gun. Oh my gosh, that's amazing gun. Um, and let's see, uh, let me think. Oh yeah, there's, so there's some questions here, obviously, and we can copper stop tone. for that. What's that? You're going to copper tone. Copper tone. Third copper prize is you're fired. I'm giving away all your, your lotion. Just wanted to, you know. <laughs> so Okay. How about this question, Pete? So why are there more baseline players than all court players? I have some thoughts, but I'll let you go first. That's a great question. You know, I actually think nowadays, I think it's transitioned. You know, I think it went from like Borg was definitely a baseliner, right? And then you had the 80s. Well, even in the 70s, I, 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 Borg was kind of an outlier, right? There was a lot of certain values. Well, there's lots of different styles in the 70s and 80s, but especially when the 80s got into the late 80s, early 90s, it became like serve and volley, power tennis. The average point was less than a second. So that's when they started to really slow everything down. It's like, this this is not good. Like, no points are happening. It's like when Michael Steak and Krychek were just pounding big serves and balls couldn't come back. I think now, actually, I think our tennis players don't get the credit they deserve. I think they are, are almost all awkward players. Whenever any of them see uh, a weakness, they're going to the net. I mean, think about think about Sissy Paz. He takes advantage of when he sees something, he'll come in. Um, Dominic Deem is not afraid to come in, and you he's lots of times eight feet behind the baseline. We know Roger Federer is an all-court player. Rafael Nadal, you, he plays eight feet behind the baseline. You give him any kind of short ball, he can come to the net and volley fantastically. I think there's a lot more all-court players than we actually um, give them credit for. Yeah, for sure, Pete. 
For sure. Um, I can't think of any player on the tour who has a terrible volley. Maybe Zarev did for a while, but that's even gotten better. But there's not too many players like, oh, my God, their volleys are pitiful. Like, they're embarrassing. They're technically solid all over the place. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, that's interesting. You know, with me, I actually was uh, primarily a baseliner. I just developed this sort of um, play where I was kind of more passive and just trying to grind, you know, 100 balls and try to make my opponents miss. And, you know, obviously with the racket technology nowadays, it's easier to just sit back rather than be more aggressive. So I guess a lot of people like to hang out back and, um, you know, it takes a lot of, you know, thinking and strategy uh, to, to actually um, properly move up and, and, uh, and win the point like that. So um, that, that could be one reason well, why. And I heard Troy say no serving volley though. There are from time to time, but I think it is going to be tough with the court surfaces being slowed down, I think it's going to be hard to get a pure serve buyer who can win tournaments like weekend and week out, like Edberg could do, like McEnroe could do. And, you know, a big difference is, and I got to, to talk to a lot of the Australian pros, and they say, you know, back in our day, you couldn't run out with a wooden racket and just, you know, tap a ball and hit it, you know, 100 miles an hour cross court winner. You know, you just, you just couldn't do that. The rackets did not allow for that. So like to serve and volley, you know, if, if you hit a good shot and you made someone stretch, you were going to get a volley above your waist to where you could have a good look. Nowadays, I mean, how many times have you seen a great point constructed by a professional tennis player and they, they get almost punished for coming to the net with, with a pro like sliding, getting here, just flicks the wrist hard and they hit like, you know, a banana shot down the line or even a cross court shot. And so it is a, you do have to be a lot more selective on what you come in on today. I don't think it's that the pros have less skill at the net. I think any pro today, like, even if you look at McEnroe towards the end of his career, one of the best term buyers of all time. And he had, you know, an Agassi was hitting returns at him. Like he had no chance against that ball. He had never seen anything like that. So I think that that is uh, why you not see, why you don't see so many certain volleyers like point in and point out for the full match. Yeah, exactly, Pete. And uh, yeah, we've got some questions actually. On uh, this is a good one. Um, you know, name a servant volleyer on the women's side. Isn't Stozier a servant volleyer? Samantha Stozier. She did like to serve and volley. Um, uh -huh. Now, as far as is this like any time or like right now? I mean, there's mm -hmm. not really a, a, a pure servant volleyer. Uh, you know, Barty might do it sometimes. There's, yeah. you know, the, what, what's become the new serve value is the serve plus one. The serve yes. is huge. They get a shot in the middle of the court. They take a huge advantage of the point. They either win it on that or they come to the net, you know, or, or the person defends it well and they get in their, to a rally. And, you know, but back in my day, there was a lot of the serve plus one for many people was the serve volley play. Um, Martina Navratilova, pure serve and volley. First, second serve. She was all over the net. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We're uh, just highlighting our friend Scott Baxter. Scotty! Um, Scotty! Beat me up, Scotty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everyone check out Player Court, by the way. Uh, great site to uh, to connect with um, both players and also coaches. Um, Scott's awesome. And so, yeah. Ooh, Taylor Townsend. That's a good one. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Totally stumped. And she had a good run at where, where she had the good run at was it the U S open last year. I want to say that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. But again, it's hard to win week in and week out. You see, she was able to do it just kind of like shock some people, but I think once you kind of get used to that rhythm and you, you, you know, what's coming, uh, she came from out of left field. She had a lot you know, injuries, really tough time. She got hot. She got some confidence. Players didn't see it, you know, but once you kind of get used to it, that's where you can just get tattooed on the tour today. Yeah, for sure, Pete, for sure. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, another good one. Uh, did we say Yana Novotna? That was good too. Um, so, okay, cool. I'm going to go to the next one. So this was a great session too. I, I really like that we've added um, some point analysis sessions this year. Um, I think we might've had only one or last year maybe, but we, we had some more this year. And one of them was by Jeff Salzenstein, uh, who reached the top 100 on the ATP tour, famously played Michael Chang and took a set off of him in the U S open. And so, um, Jeff, uh, talked about single strategy and it was really cool on his ses session, which you can still watch actually. 
Uh, and, and watch forever if you get the lifetime access pass. Um, you yeah, you get the lifetime access pass. Come on now. Yeah. So tennisfilesummit.com slash Pete upgrade. And we'll yeah. put a link later. Um, but so with him, uh, he analyzed two top 400 players in the world playing against each other. And believe it or not, there were mistakes made strategically by these players, even though, I mean, a top 400, you're an amazing player. Um, not that much separates you, believe it or not, for, you know, between, you know, top 400 and top 100. But um, so anyway, what they what Jeff pointed out was that you really have to be smart and play their percentages with your serve plus one. And so what uh, what Jeff showed us was a point where um, one of the players, he hit a very nice slice serve out wide and it took the returner off the court. The returner uh, returned a short ball. Um, on the right, on the forehand side of the server. And then what the server did was he tried to play it too fancy and he actually hit a forehand back cross court and he didn't even hit it like wide enough of an angle. So he basically tried to outsmart the opponent as he thought and uh, the opponent just had a forehand pass. And so uh, I just want to point this out to illustrate uh, again that, you know, you want to play the percentages um, and you don't want to be too fancy in a lot of cases. Uh, you know, obviously it's sometimes it's, it's, it's good to try to, um, uh, hit behind your opponent. But in this case, um, the server would have had uh, a, a huge high percentage of, of winning if he had just approached down the line and made the opponent on the deuce side run all the way from the, the sideline to hit a running backhand pass and said he gave him a forehand and, and he didn't have to move as much. So I think, uh, as you know, it was a great segue by Pete really about the serve plus one being the new serve and volley. Um, but just to overall really think about the percentages, especially when you're playing at the club level, you do not have to do all these fancy plays. Um, you just really have to nail down the basics and uh, do some other things as we'll get into actually with the next tip I'm looking at. And, uh, and that way you'll, you'll be in great shape to play the basics. My coach always used to tell me whenever we were having trouble, uh, when I played uh, D1 college tennis, he said, go back to the basics. And that is going to be the key for 95% of you to be winning your matches. So uh, Pete, what do you think about that? You know, my coach used to tell me when we were in trouble. Uh oh, what's that? Cheat. Oh my God. I don't believe it. You're too honorable, I'm, sir. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> but you know, I've lost so many matches on overthinking a shot on the big point. And so I just kind of want to leave you with this. Think about it like you're taking a multiple uh, choice test. And you know what teachers always tell you, like go with your first instinct and just trust it and go with that. It's like when you like leave an answer and like, no, no, no. And you erase it and then you put the other one down. Then you get a test back. Oh my God, I was right the first time. Just go with your first, most obvious instinct. Like when you see that, don't question it because lots of times we overthink it. And that is so true. I agree. I'm yeah. done. Awesome. Yeah, I was just typing to, to Mitchell. Uh, hopefully I typed that properly, but he was just asking, you know, what the surplus one is. And, you know, that's just as you're, you know, as a server, you serve it and then your next shot after that, which, you know, after when yeah. you get the It's return. basically you got a cannon serve and a cannon forehand, like, that's it. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's what so I try to do. Get that. Just go do that. Yeah, easy peasy, right? Yeah. Um, but that, that's really what Roddick did. Roddick, I mean, you see his back end wasn't the greatest, but I mean, he got to number one in the world through this the serve plus one, you know, the big forehand. I've got a serve plus 30 play. I serve it in and then I go, do, do, do. Wow. That's 30 shots till they miss. That's tough to beat. You know, I've seen, uh, Pete, uh, you know, in full, full body. Uh, oh, that sounded weird. But anyway, he's in good shape, man. He, he looks like he's in good shape. <laughs> Stop. Get to the next point. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We got to have fun here. All right. So the next uh, point that I was alluding to is by Rick Macy. So Rick Macy is a legend. He's coached, I think, five or six number one uh, players, you know, like Venus and Serena Williams and Andy Roddick. Well, All right. Yeah, Sharapova. And not too bad, you know? And, uh, you know, I think we've, we've talked about this before, but Pete actually went to Rick Macy's academy. And I love Rick. And he's awesome. And so uh, Pete got a lesson from from uh, Rick. It cost $500 an hour. I don't know if it's gone up since then. Um, so obviously, uh, very valuable to get some of Rick's time. And we got a lot of time for him from him on the summit. And so uh, 
you know, I know Pete, uh, Rick worked on your forehand some, you know, there's always things you can learn. I mean, Pete's a great player, but still picked up things from Rick and, uh, and yeah, so Rick is a legend and Rick talked about a lot about the mental aspect of the game. We had him on the strategy session, but a lot of great mental nuggets. And what he talked about was that winning is really having control of your mind and thinking about the match of one point at a time. And what you need to do, and this is very powerful, you control the situation. The con situation doesn't control you, or you shouldn't let it control you. And, you know, it's a very familiar situation for club players, you know, anybody to come upon a situation, ask yourself if this has happened. You, you go out and you play a player where your strokes are way better looking than them. It looks like, oh, God, the forehand is ugly. The backhand, how do they even get it over the net? The serve, you know, all sorts of things going on, hitches and so forth. And then you come out of the match and you lost two and two, as Rick put it, and you wonder what happened. And that's, in his word, it's because your opponent has a better attitude. They're outworking you. They have the drive to get more balls back than you. And really, it comes down to that a lot of times. And so, you know, don't get frustrated in Rick's words, you really you have to flip it. And by flip it, it means flip your attitude. And so you have to be the one to say, you know what? I'm going to take the initiative. I'm going to be positive and I'm going to control what I can control and let go of the rest. And I'm going to outwork my opponent and do everything I can. And uh, I know this is, you know, it sounds and it is motivational, but it really is the truth. And so I know when my best matches have been when I have had this attitude of this grittiness, you know, we in, in college, our mascot was true grit. And so we just tried our best to really put it in, put in the work and the effort. And even if we were down 6-0, 5-0, we're still putting in the work. Uh, I remember one match actually where I had that feeling actually. And it was funny, my opponent pissed me off. You know, he was up 6-1, uh, in the zonals, which was like the top 10 players in juniors. They go and play different sections. And so I was like seven in the mid-Atlantic or whatever. And so I played this guy. I was, I was losing. And then he did something that ticked me off. And I said, you know what? I am not going to let another ball pass me. And when I did that, um, it was just amazing. Like something flipped and I was just outworking him. And I came back and I won. And at the end of that match, he actually took three of his rackets and cracked them one by one, just like you saw. Um, uh, who's the, the Greek player, uh, Pete, or Cy from Cyprus? Uh, Baghdadis, right? Baghdadis, yeah. Yeah, and my opponent did that. And, you know, it was a great feeling for me. Not that I was happy that he broke his rackets. Oh, you are too. Come on. <laughs> I, I plead the fifth. I'm, I'm an attorney. I plead the fifth. So, but um, in any case, uh, it's just really uh, just one example. Uh, and there are better examples out there of, of just, you know, having that mindset, you know, of whether I win or lose, I'm going to execute one ball at a time, control what I can control. And I love this advice from Mick, Rick Macy. And if you haven't yet, you, you need to watch that presentation. Uh, it was really great stuff. And I heard somebody said that, you know, he skipped all the uh, talking head presentations and that's totally fine. But I think you're making a mistake if you skip uh, interviews like the ones with, uh, with, with Rick Macy and Paul Anacone, because those are the best in the game. And, you know, sometimes they don't have the time to like put forth like an encore presentation and stuff. You know, they're super busy. Paul Anacone is a commentator for tennis channel. Rick Macy is teaching many, many hours a day. He's running an Academy, but um, there's a lot of golden nuggets and sometimes it's the mindset pieces and the strategy pieces that you don't even need to look at uh, a lesson on court to, to, you know, to benefit you. So, I mean, it, every aspect is important. So uh, don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Pete. <laughs> I have a lot. I have a lot of thoughts. Um, first of all, Rick's presentation was great. I listened to that. And one of the things that impressed me about Rick is uh, one year for tennis con, I actually filmed him giving a lesson on the court this girl Bella. And as he gave the lesson, I was like, just marveling. I'm like, this dude just gave like 150 tips in like a half hour. <laughs> and it went from like technical to a lot of mental motivational. I mean, he, he did a lot of stuff. And the other thing that I wanted to point out was watching this last dance with Michael Jordan. He is rookie year. His team they were kind of like a ragtag bunch of, for lack of a better word, losers, right? And there was this one game where they were down by like 12 points going with like five minutes left in the game. And, and so the team just basically started to even talk about how like it's over. 
And Jordan looked at them like, it's not over, we're winning. And he basically put the whole team on his back and they won that game. There was another game where uh, Doug Collins, who's the head, who was the head coach at one point, it was his first game and he was super nervous. He, he was drink. No, he wasn't drinking water. His mouth was all dry and had like dried up gum on it. And he was sweating like crazy. And Jordan came over to him and gave him a cup of water and uh, said, here, you know, wipe, wipe your face off. He's like, I'm not letting you lose your first game. You know, that kind of like never say die attitude is, is what we all need. Now, of course, we don't have the talent of, of Michael Jordan, but that leads me to my next thing. I think it's that. But also, why do some players who don't have really good strokes beat you? And I think you want to really realize this in your development and be aware of it so you can kind of make an adjustment in the match and decide if you want to play the game that you're trying to get to or you just want to outgrind them that day. A reason a, a lot of people don't have many good strokes in club tennis win so much is they don't have to think all the things that you're trying to do. Because most people who are here online – you're between that 3-5 to 4-0 level, and you're trying to play the right way. You want nice strokes. You don't want to go out there and just poke the ball around. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here online. But a lot of club players who are have good hand-eye coordination, they're fine with that. They don't, they don't care to take private lessons. They don't care to improve their strokes. So they're just there making contact. And so there's very little that can go wrong. When you have good hand-eye coordination, you can just do this, and the, the strings have a lot of energy in it. You can keep a lot of balls in play and you're playing somebody who like is trying to get the right technique. But as Rick Macy says, isn't baked in like what, what Rick always talks about being baked in. What he means is it's on autopilot. It's correct. The the uh, performer never has to think about it anymore. It just happens. That's where the pros are. They're in unconscious competence. They don't think they just do. You're not there yet. So it's harder for you, even though you're a better player with better skills it's harder for you to put it under pressure because you're here, you're here, but maybe your racket face opens sometime at the wrong point and then it flies or you, or you get a little nervous because you're having to think your way through strokes. So just realize that that's part of the equation. And so you shouldn't, it's okay if you're in a, a grind with somebody who has less skill than you because you're trying to do something that's harder than they're trying to do. And if you keep working at it, what eventually happens is you're like maybe here and they're and they're up here beating you and you can't believe it. And then you start to get up here with them and then you beat them, you grind it out. And then once your strokes get baked in, then it's like, shoo, they don't even see you anymore. They can't even call you on the phone anymore. That's how it happens. And I've seen that happen a lot in club players, especially the people who have the good attitude. Yeah, for sure, Pete, for sure. This is a really good question. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, in, great, great interviews. Um, and, uh, so a pilotaf says, or asks what pro player impresses you the most with having a disciplined recovery, mental attitude. And I, I want to challenge you, Pete, do you have anybody that you would name outside of the big four that impresses you? Nick Kyrgios. <laughs> That's right. Right. That's right. Like, it, like bro, I don't even know why it's in, tennis, some bro. Ways, in some ways it's not discipline, but yeah. in some ways his attitude, his belief system, when he, when he like, when it's a two out of three, yeah. seven, sometimes he actually, you know, has that confidence where he has so many wins or a top 10, but that, that was a joke who has, well, you know, Medvedev, Medvedev, that dude is a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and he's got that winning attitude. Like when he started, when the crowd started to get on him, he basically took that crowd and he said, okay, guys, you guys just, just, uh, Egg me on to where I'm going to get to the finals. He says, I think he beat Feliciana Lopez. It's like, you know what? I was tired. I was injured. I didn't even really want to complete the match. When you guys started booing me, it gave me the incentive to win the match. And, and, what, and, and now that you guys are like this with me now, I'm going to go all the way to the finals. Like he called it. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, one person that I like, um, I haven't watched like a ton of him, but I like Alex de Menar. I mean, I just think that he's really gritty and he – What's that? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Speed Demon. Yeah. And he finds a way to win and, you know, he's pumping himself up a lot. And, um, you know, that's a player who I think is very, mentally very strong, especially for the type of player that he is, where he doesn't have like any huge weapons in my opinion, but he's just really able to outgrind a lot of players and he has posted some impressive results. So um, I really like him for sure. 
Uh, let's see. We got some really good comments. Well, Anacone is one of my favorite commentators. I definitely for sure. Um, yeah, of course, uh, Zorana Djokovic. We were just trying to name some out of the top four, but I think obviously like, I mean, Nadal, <laughs> Djokovic, like they're amazing. Yeah, you know, Djokovic is laughing as we talked about on match point down, you know, when he wins, it's like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, if there's any other comments, Pete, just let me know. I'm just trying to take this one off and then go to my next point if that works for you. So, sure. um, the next one is by uh, Will Hamilton and the Bryan brothers. And this is actually similarly echoed by, I think it was GG too. I, but anyway, the point is that you can take control, um, you know, of the match, like in doubles, even as the server. So let's say if Pete and I are playing doubles and, you know, I'm playing at net and he's serving and maybe he feels like I'm not that great of a, <laughs> that great of a net player or something, or I have weak volleys or I'm timid with my volleys. There's definitely things that you can be doing as a server to like try to help them out. I mean, first off you can make more for serves, um, to decrease the chance that your opponent uh, returner is going to rip it at your partner. Also, a great one is to serve T more and not wide. Um, let's just assume this is the, the deuce court um, because then it, they're more likely to, especially if they're righty, hit the backhand, back cross court. So then you're going to get the ball most likely. Another thing is simply to, to just try to communicate with your partner and actually move them to a proper position. Um, that's more suitable for you Here, all. Here's the proper position I do with you, Maribon. Are you ready? This is why I do. So on the count of three, take yourself off the screen. That's right. Oh, I, I messed it up. Let's try that again. Ready? Do it again. Ready? 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 No, take yourself off the screen. No, like, no. What? Oh, ready? one, two, three. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I move him in the I I move him off the court. Yeah. I mean I come back. That's 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 brutal, Pete. I didn't know you were like that. I thought you have to work there. on that. That actually would have worked if we would have got it right. I no, went the wrong way. The first time would have been perfect. Wait, try one more time. Ready? One more time. Right? One, two, three. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty I good. Fine. Okay, we're done. <laughs> All right, we're done with that. Um, yeah. So it was GG Mustafa. Thank you. Um, let's see. Ooh, interesting. Tony. Tony Robinson. Us oldies serve lots of extreme spin serves. Is that something she that you find, Pete? Yeah, I'm an oldie. I serve lots of extreme spin. You got I, think, I think actually, you know, the players who can, the players who can win a lot more matches because, you know, as you get older, you can, if, if you have some real technical flaws, it actually doesn't take that much to, as long as you're, you know, healthy, even somebody in their 60s, 70s, they can actually easily add 10 to 20 miles an hour to their serve. If they got some real technical leaks, but let's say if you've got a pretty good technique and, you know, it's not that the technique is holding you back, you're not going to add 20 miles an hour to your serve as opposed to when you were 20, you know, if you have decent technique. But what you can keep improving is that spin, that action on the ball and and the placement. So that's very true. Awesome. We did actually have a question which just popped in my head and um, sorry if I can't find it to put it up here, but what do you think about the saber? So the uh, chip and charge on the serve, uh, is that something that you recommend Pete as maybe like a, a once in a while type of uh, play? And I'll give you my thoughts too. Uh, absolutely. And here, here's why, you know, we always want to be comparing our game to the pros and there's lots of emails like, and I do it too. And we all want to do it. I want to do it too. So I like still have this aspiration, but it's like, you know, hit your forehand like Feder. you know, do this like that. It's like, we're not playing against Novak Djokovic. When you hit an approach shot, you're not approaching against Novak Djokovic. You, you, so like, I think the chip shot is way underused because you're watching the pros play and you want to approach like Feder. But I think if you had a deadly slice forehand and backhand that skids and stays low, What's going to happen? It's going to be they're going to be passing you less, and you're going to get a lot of volleys right up here. And if you can get that, you should be able to put the volley away. Yeah, I like it. So, Pete, yeah, I mean, similarly, you know, with, with uh, the chip in charge, I found it's it's a great play, um, and it surprises a lot of players. I mean, obviously, this is a skill that you need to practice 
Um, and I mean, practice is the best time to practice. So, I mean, I know it's kind of weird to say that, but I mean, some people are really even scared of looking bad in practice. And sometimes you have to get used to committing to learning something, even if you're not going to necessarily be successful in the beginning. And that's what, what a lot of us have to do is commit to improving despite roadblocks. But anyway, um, yeah, I practiced the, the chip and charge, uh, myself and doubles especially is, is great too. You know, like you're actually forcing them to hit up on the volley and that's wonderful for, uh, for feasting upon later on, if you can execute it. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh. Okay. Now we got some racket advice and, uh, Gerald, I highly suggest that you watch the session I did with Alan Iverson, not the basketball player, speaking of the bulls, but, um, from, uh, sales rep from Babolat. And we did like an hour and a half, basically question and answer session, which for gearheads, amazing probably worth the uh, price of the all access pass alone there. But Gerald asks, I am a coach who is playing with a pro staff 95 S what is a good upgrade head size replacement racket? Do you have any thoughts on that? So are, are you asking that you want to upgrade the head size to a different, uh, no, do you have any thoughts on that Pete? Well, it depends on, you know, the way he swings and everything. That's the style. he has. He's, he's a coach. Um, you know, he might like, Better moved up to a 98. He might like that. But, you know, I think it's one of the greatest things we have in our game is the whole demo program. I, I think I think you you listen to you. You you look at some rackets that you uh, think look cool or, or you've heard some good things about. And then you go on a demo program and you try a lot until you like it. And that's the coolest thing you can do. There's, there's a lot of things in life you can't do that with, you know, tennis must just be awesome. Cause we guys, we give you guys free access to the, to this tennis summit. You can try rackets for free, lots of stuff. You can't do that. You can't go up and like, Hey, I'm going to try that. I'll be taking this for a, you know, a couple of hours. I'll bring it back. Like, no, you got to pay for it. So, um, take advantage of the demo program. Awesome. I just want to shout out to, uh, Mike Mirachenko here. Uh, he's a very good five Oh player. Um, you know, it's tough playing him. He gets so many balls back speaking about that mental fortitude and just will to win and passion for the game. Uh, I really like uh, Mike's passion there. So shout out to you. Um, okay, cool. So let's go to, uh, to number nine, actually. Wow. Number already at nine. Okay. We're also already at an hour too, which is ridiculous. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but we just, that's how much fun we have here. And I appreciate uh, Paul, your, uh, sorry, Pete, your time. So then number nine is uh, from Paul Anacon, which was mentioned, I think by Linda and some others is a great session to check out. And if you didn't know, Paul has coached Pete Sampras, Roger Federer, uh, Sloan Stevens, Tim Henman, and he's coaching Taylor Fritz right now. So this is an incredible person to listen to, um, you know, on the summit. Uh, and uh, he's just got some great insights. He's a tennis channel commentator. So Paul talks about the importance of knowing your own game and then knowing your opponent's game and then focusing on the execution. And so I'll tell this story again because I think it's really important. You know, I played my very first college tennis match um, in a, co a Cornell inv Invitational, excuse me. And I played actually against a player from uh, who I used to play in juniors. And I was up against him 6-2-5-1, I believe. And what happened was at that point, I, I immediately thought about how cool it would be to win my very first college match. And as soon as you think about the results, a lot of times you're going to freeze up. And that's what I did. Uh, funny enough, I even let one of his shots bounce. It was a floating shot on match point, And it floated out. And I didn't call it out. I don't know why, what, what happened. Anyway, I lost the match. And when I came out of that um, with my head slumped down, then my coach at the time uh, said, focus on the process, not the results. And so the thought process from Paul, which is really helpful right here, very actionable advice for when you go back on the court, is to um, first understand your own game. So your strength and your, and your we strengths and weaknesses, and then look at a couple areas of your opponents you want to attack. So you want to think, you know, okay, how can I attack the backhand? Um, for example, even going deeper and more specific, how many points 
can I try to set up with me f- at the net, forcing my opponent to hit a backhand pass? So you're thinking about like setting up the points like this. You're visualizing the points. That's a huge thing too. I, I interviewed James Blake on the podcast and he was on my summits. I've uh, been privileged to talk to him twice now. Or was it three times maybe? And so he talked about how he visualized how each point, uh, and this is in my free ebook actually that you get from joining the, the summit. Um, uh, the number one secret, uh, it's actually tennis secrets, um, 2020. So anyway, he talks about visualizing and picturing, um, each point and playing them in your mind, because this helps reinforce, you know, physiologically how you're going to actually set up the points and it helps a lot. And it's a big secret that also Rick Macy talked about as well. Paul Anacone has talked about James Blake has talked about. Do you need more proof than that? So visualization, um, huge. Thank you, Pete, for reinforcing too. And uh, so, yeah, overall, you know, just want to focus on execution, not on the results, because once you focus on the results, then bad things you usually happen. You know, I think it's fine to focus on results and goals, like when you're actually like planning out, um, you know, how your goals and everything. But um, especially once you're on the court, you don't want to do that. You know, you want to focus on, uh, execution. So, um, Pete thoughts. Are we on number 10? We're on number nine. That was nine. Yeah. I thought it was good. Here's number two. Wait, we got to get ready for number 10. <laughs> like for those who couldn't hear or don't have good hearing, <laughs> what did, what was said here? From Arkansas, forward six seven Scotty Pippen. Ah, interesting. Yep. Chicago Bulls. Chicago Bulls. That's number ten. Chicago Bulls. No, I'm just saying it's like that's like the drum roll. That was your. Oh, drum- the drum roll. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was good drum roll. So number ten, guys, and we're gonna give out prizes. Uh, very, you know, pretty soon at the end of the the show or the session. Number ten by Dean Hollingworth. Oh, he was good. He's awesome. Like I, I love him. And so we did a live workout uh, on Saturday, I believe. It was amazing. Many of you kept typing in this chat to keep punishing me. And so he did for like an hour. And uh, the main point of all of doing the workout, of showing you, you know, me doing it live is to just show you how important it is to keep up with your fitness, especially in these times, because what we're very afraid of, what Dean has expressed, many people have expressed uh, in the tennis community uh, as coaches and trainers is that once things open up, hopefully soon, there's going to be a lot of us who haven't been working out enough. And we're going to go out there, not having done anything, not having worked on our fitness, we're mm-hmm. going to go out there. We're going to get so excited, mm-hmm. we're gonna play a full match, and then we're going to get injured. I can mm-hmm. guarantee you that this is going to happen, unfortunately. And this oh. happened to me, you know, um, you know, I'm giving you advice here, but I, I'm constantly learning, making mistakes, and then learning some more, implementing what I learned. And so, you know, back when I, you know, after I took the bar exam, which, uh, you know, is you have to pass to become an attorney, uh, be licensed in your state. Um, I was studying for three months straight. I didn't play much tennis. I didn't work out too much, a little bit. And then the next day after I took the bar exam, I just played, um, I played tennis for like two, three hours that day. And then I also did a double workout. So I worked out for an hour. I played tennis for like two or three hours and I worked out again and I got injured. So, um, this is a little bit more, maybe of an extreme example, but what I just want to tell you is that you need to not eat ice cream like Pete is doing and, and you need to focus on your workouts. And, uh, there's so many amazing exercises that you can do. And if you just check out any of the fitness sessions, there were so many, I mean, to, to I just want to scroll down here, got to refresh the page and then, uh, you know, talk right about a of them. You're, you're, you're brutal, Pete. I mean, I want some ice cream, but you can still eat ice cream as long as you're, 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 um, working out and, uh, taking care of yourself and keeping that balance. But, you know, we got Dr. Mark Kovacs talking about protecting and strengthening the shoulder. You got Dr. Sean Drake about how to increase your mobility, flexibility, and tennis longevity. And you got a bunch of presentations from Nathan Martin from tennis fitness, Dot com on seven key exercises you can do anywhere, anytime to help your game. Dean Hollingworth, improving your on-court movement. Dominic King, Andy Blow, list goes on. And so I'm just telling you this because I want you to go and watch some of these sessions. 
I want you to read it, to, to watch carefully. I want you to write down some exercises that you think are going to be really good for your game. And I want you to create a workout for yourself. It doesn't have to be 15 exercises or whatever, but use the advice that is given in these sessions, pick out exercises, do them at least a few times a week. And it's, it's going to make a huge difference in your game. You're going to feel amazing. You're going to feel like you're accomplishing things, um, you know, and uh, it's going to be great for you. So eat your ice cream like Pete did, but also work on your fitness, work on your mobility, your flexibility. All of this is in the uh, all the sessions. And, you know, if you want to watch them pass tomorrow morning, get the all access pass at uh, tennisfiles.com slash Pete upgrade um, to give some love to Pete. And uh, really how I encourage you, fitness is huge. If you don't make time for fitness, then you're going to have to make time for the physio table. And I got that quote from Alistair McCaw, who was on my previous summits as well. And um, I'm sure I'll be talking to him again soon. So fitness is huge. So what do you think, Pete? I think this is great. And when I saw um, your session with Dean, I was thinking how good that was. And, and that one session alone was worth the entire thing, I thought. I was so good. You guys did a good job. And Maribond's actually in good shape. He's in very good shape there. You're looking fit, fit Thank young man. But I noticed he had, he had a full sweat. And a lot of the, a lot of the moves were very, very, you know, so functional, so good. It was like he was sweating, but so many of the moves were great for injury prevention and flexibility. It had everything in it. It was really, really awesome. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was great. Um, people did ask if you're still a practicing lawyer. Are you? Are you better call Saul? Are you like better call Saul? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to disclose whether I know that movie or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to rip me again. But um, yeah, I actually am, guys. So I uh, work for... Uh, the government. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I, you know, if I was working for a law firm, I think I would not be able to do this summit. But fortunately, I work for the government, the hours are not insane. And so I have time, you know, I also take some time off and so forth. But, you know, um, yeah, uh, I am. And uh, I just, you know, that's one thing, too. It's just I want to illustrate real quick that if you want to do something, you will make time for it. Like, you know, I'm not trying to put myself on some sort of pedestal or anything, but like, I just have a huge passion for tennis and for bringing out the information that I learn. Uh, I'm very privileged to be able to talk to so many great experts and people like Pete and to connect with so many amazing people like you. I've got so many amazing emails, but you know, even though I'm, I, I have a full-time job and I do other things, I try to play tennis and so forth, um, hang out with family. Like I really love tennis and I love just this whole online platform. And so uh, even though I've, I have, you know, all these other things going on in a job, I still um, do my best in the morning and at, at night uh, to, to put out this stuff. So yes, I am. And I just want to illustrate again that anything that you want to do, you're going to make time for. So no excuses, man, no excuses. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Get it, so. done. Get it done. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Linda, thank you for, Highlighting my coronavirus virus sit, warm compresses. Haha, ha, you guys are great. Oh my gosh. See? Oh really? my god. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do the rest of the presentation oh, like this. We need to call that out first thing in the I mean, we would have all just overlooked it. We would have. You didn't have uh, to. okay. I can just do it like this. I'm fine. Um, but yeah, Pete, so uh and everybody, I hope that you like those um 10, uh, 10 tips for you all. I mean, you know, again, like I think there's a lot of great info in this, in this summit and, you know, you got a few hours left if you have the free pass, totally cool. But highly encourage you to check out the all access pass. We're going to put a banner up here. What's I'm, up? I'm bringing the big guns for you. Sure. I wasn't planning on doing this, but we did okay. the last live. I like to reward action takers. And because people are here right now, they are action taker. And so I'm bringing this back one night only. You're not going to see, I'm not going to email this out tomorrow. I will not be emailing this out as my final bonus because I think Maribond's closing this on Wednesday. But tonight, if, if you order tonight before I wake up in the morning, I will add three bonuses, with cha which are my challenges. And my challenges are the coolest thing I've ever done. And if there are some people here online who have done it. 
like Brad's done my challenges. Brad, speak up for me if, you, if you're still there. You know, these challenges are amazing. And so you're going to get a seven day serve challenge when you sign up tonight. We sold that for 67 bucks. You're going to get a seven day forehand challenge. So now you can run that serve plus one we talked about. And you're going to get a 30 day tennis technique and fitness challenge, which we're on day 28 right now. And it is amazing. Jeez. And, and also if you sign up, even though we're ending the 30 day challenge for the fitness, I'm still going to give you seven days when you log in, you can be sending me your video because I want you guys to experience how cool this is. These challenges, it's like you have a course and a private tutor and the private tutor is me. And it's the coolest thing because you will basically do a challenge. Like I'll say today's picture perfect forehand day. And then you just click a button. It's super simple. Let me see if I can do it. It's super simple. You click a button and then, and then you turn in your video and then I come back and coach you. I'm actually going to go on this app and try and find it for you. And you guys can do this. And the reason why I'm doing this for you is because I want everybody to experience how awesome this is. But it's too good a bonus to be offering too much. I will not be offering it tomorrow. But I figure since you guys are up 9, 10 at night listening to us, I will do it for anybody who's here on the call. And Maribon has the link and he can send it to you tomorrow. But um, let me see. I've got to get somebody up here. Okay. Let's see, um, day 27. Okay, all right, um, let's see, Ken. Ken, do Ken doesn't mind. So look at this. Good stuff, let's get back. back. So Ken, I don't know if you guys can see that. Ken sent in his video. There you go. And then I respond to his video. And I'll just do it right now. Look how easy this is. I basically just hit reply. And like you guys just do the same thing. It's like a conversation that goes back and forth between teacher and student. And so I'm just going to send them a message right now to show how simple this is. Ken and I are good buddies. Look, it's giving me the countdown. Three, two, one. Okay, we're on. Ken, I'm just talking to you right now just so I want people to see how easy it is for us to communicate back and forth. And so right now I'm leaving a message for my buddy Ken, who's a 30-day uh, tennis technique and, and fitness challenge member. And we talk back and forth every day like this where I'm giving him feedback. I'm saying, Ken, you got a really good forehand, but you got to load a little more on the back leg before you come forward. And remember, you were scooping a little bit your forehand. This is actually technique advice I was giving him. He was scooping a little bit on his forehand, so I need to come out here more. He need to be hitting out here more and using his core more. But he's done a fantastic job. Ken, I love you. Thanks for letting me use this as an example. And then I basically stop it, and, and then I like it. Ken, I'm just talking. And then I just, I just send it to him. I just sent him, I just sent him that video. That's how it works. It's, it's amazing. You guys got to do it. Dude, so. that is ridiculous. So, I mean, we have a lot of people who, who are loving the 30 day challenge. And so can, can you just recap like what everyone's getting? And I really appreciate you Pete for stepping up to do this. Like, so, okay. So I'll recap my part. So if you buy today, of course, you're getting lifetime access to all 30 plus sessions, right? Amazing sessions on court lessons, point analysis sessions, uh, master classes. Really, there, should a, there shouldn't be a bonus with all you just get for that, but keep going. Yeah, no, seriously, it's it's crazy. And then you get on top of that, the downloadable audio files, which are MP3 files, you can listen to anywhere you want. You're getting transcriptions to all of the sessions, which is new this year. Put My team is working hard to transcribe all those. Um, you're getting uh, special deals and discounts. You're getting an implementation guide to help you write down the most important things from the, the sessions. And you're getting access to the uh, exclusive Facebook group where we're going to talk uh, tennis and you can post your videos and we're going to comment on them. So that's that's what you get from my end. And then now, Pete, you are adding what again? <laughs> I'm adding, first of all, seven day Great. service challenge. So you can, you can send me videos too. So the way I do my challenges, I'm like, okay, today's lesson we're going to be doing a slice serve lesson. And I give like a 25 minute lesson on the slice serve in detail. And then I say, okay, now it's your turn to go out and actually do the drill that I did, you know, do the exercise that you see and send in your video. And then I come on and analyze it just like you saw. Okay. The next one you're going to get. And so on this, on the seven day serve challenge, we, we worked on the perfect uh, practice, which was, a lot like you saw in, in, in the tennis summit, but a little different and had some little different nuances to it. We um, had a power serving day where it was all about adding power to your serve. We had a slice serve day. We had a kick serve day. 
we had where we had a, um, we were running plays off the serve day, like a serve plus one day. And, and so it was really, really cool. Um, so there's seven days. I don't remember every single day exactly, but it was something like that. Then on the uh, seven day forehand challenge, we went over the ATP Rick Macy forehand blueprint that he taught me. We had a day on relaxing. We had a day on footwork. We had a forehand return of serve day because I want to show you how to do the proper technique off the return of serve and how you can practice by yourself. All this, by the way, you can practice 100% by yourself. All our members were practicing just with a basket and a court or even sometimes just uh, you know shadow stroking. You can work with a ball machine, super flexible. You can do this all by yourself. And, and we also did a, a crush it in the midcourt. So I, I showed you how to attack midcourt balls, how to hit inside out forehands. We did a, a, an ATP and WTA forehand footwork day. So I showed you how to use footwork patterns on your forehand. It was really, really cool. And then the last thing we've been doing, which has been a fun, fun marathon, is we have been doing a 30-day tennis technique and fitness challenge. And with that tennis technique and fitness challenge, one day you're getting like a challenge on technique. So it'd be like, this is the picture per beforehand. These are the steps to do. Go, send me your video. Then it's, here's a workout for today, a tennis specific workout. We're working, we're not just working on, you know, getting fit, but we're also working on our tennis moves. I'm a big believer in that we should treat tennis more like karate. You know, karate art, um, the people who are in the martial arts are always working on their technique and their moves without actually contacting an opponent and fighting them. Tennis players need to do this more. You need to develop picture perfect technique off the court without a tennis ball. If you can't do it without a tennis ball, how all of a sudden do you think you're going to do it with a tennis ball? Yep. One yep. thing I always complain about, and now the more I get an online instruction, and especially that I'm seeing the people who are in the 30 day challenge, how we're correcting their technique without a ball. And we're making like amazing progress is that in a way we do a little bit of a disservice by the first thing we usually do is have you hit a ball. Um, there's going to be people who disagree with me on this, but it's like, we're, we're teaching you bad habits from the moment we have you strike that ball. Look, look at this tennis ball. You never played tennis before. Look at that. It bounces way out of the screen. And so most people have never played tennis before. They usually hit a high ball and then they're usually hitting shots like this. <laughs> so right off the bat, they're having bad technique where if we're like right off the bat, right and worrying to hit, hit a ball, you know, can you get here with your two hands and can you do that? Look at that. Everybody do this with me now. Can you do this? Take a look at this. Can you go like this? And can you just do that? Now, all of a sudden, look what happens. You look like a tennis player. There's very few players out on a recreational court who ever even look like this. Look how hard it is. Arms slightly bent. Turn. Now you look like a pro. So it's going over these moves without having to worry about hitting a ball. So all you're worried about is looking freaking awesome. So that's that's the 30-day challenge. And, you know, I'm not going to be – with everybody for the next 30 days with it where you're saying video because we're almost done, but I'm going to allow you to send me videos when you sign up tonight for the next seven to 10 days, you know, within a grace period. And, and so that's what you're going to get when you sign up tonight with us. And I'm not going to be offering this tomorrow. I'm not going to do it. Right. Yeah. So it's a special for tonight. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for that, Pete. I mean, uh, we already got, you know, some comments that it, it's just been so hard to, uh, if we got Judy who said it's so much information, in the all access pass that you can't keep it all in mind. Wonderful to be able to refer back to it. And yeah, I mean, it, it really is tough. Um, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of great information and uh, it's really going to really service your game and be a great investment if you uh, invest in the all access pass through the link. And uh, then you're going to get the amazing bonuses from Pete. So it really is like, we really try to pack a lot of value um, I mean, if, if you know, Pete and I, you know, like I put in so many hours and so does he to this event and we actually, you know, we open it up for free. Like it takes so many hours and, you know, we love it, but it's tough, but, um, we just try to bring a lot of value. So even when we're offering like, you know, products and stuff like this, like we're still packing it with a lot of value, you know, you're getting like many, many times over what it's worth. So, uh, this is like an amazing deal. And Pete, I really appreciate you for offering like all this, all these crazy bonuses that are each worth it by themselves. 
Marabon, I got one more surprise for you. One more surprise, sir. What can is share, that? Share, can I share my screen with you? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Oops. Okay. What is the surprise, sir? Okay. I've put in my credit card information. I've put in oh my, my address. I am going to order right now the tennis summit because I believe that the education is so good. I want to own it forever. Wow. I got a chance to watch Rick Macy. I got a chance to watch Maribon go through his workout. I got a chance to watch bits and pieces of Jeff. But to be honest, the week flew by and I want to buy it from you. I don't want you to give it to me. You know I could hook you up, right? <laughs> I, I don't want the hookup. Um, one thing that one of my favorite online teachers taught, you know, taught me from listening to him, Russell Brunson, who said he was a wrestler when he was a kid. And so I'm just going to hit the button here. Oh, shit. Oh, mission. I'm going to order gonna... it. You, you want to maybe yeah. like <laughs> do it and then we'll see the completion screen. Yeah, take, take, take me away and I'm going to order and I'll show you the confirmation. Page. Okay. Yeah. We're at, Hey, take nobody <laughs> stupid thing, but <laughs> I can still, I can still talk. Right. So no one can yeah, see yeah. me. Anymore. So, um, yeah, he was, he wanted to be a great wrestler and his wrestling coach said, you need to read this book. And the, and the coach actually had it. And Russell Brunson's like, okay, well just let me borrow the book. And he's like, no, you got to buy the book. He's like, well, why do I got to buy the book? I'm like 15 years old. I don't make any money. He's like, well, you gotta, you gotta earn some money somehow and buy it because he's like, you're not going to value it. The information until you buy it. And so he bought the book. Long story short, this guy's like super overachiever and he actually ended up being a state champion in wrestling. Now I think like his business makes over a hundred million dollars a year. So I believe in that. Okay. You come back and okay. I'm in. I did it. Nice. You don't I, need to get. Can that. you guys see that? Yeah. All right. So I just bought your pass, buddy. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I mean, you're, you're such a great support and, uh, you know, I, I really, really means a lot for you to invest in like stuff that I make. And I'm definitely going to do it back to you because, uh, you know, you're a great guy. So, um, yeah, when I don't, don't want to tear up right now. I'm trying not to tear up. When Tennis Con comes, I want you to buy five of mine. Five. All right, cool. I'll give them out to my friends and fam, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you, Pete. That's that's great. But I mean, it. you know, I, I guess it shows, you know, that it brings some value to to you and to others. And, um, yeah. And Gene, you know, I want to highlight Gene. Thank you so much because, um, you know, what I did just to be frank is like, you know, I surveyed everybody. I asked them after last year, I said, you know, what did you like? What didn't you like? And sometimes it's hard to, you know, read comments if they're like tough on you, but it's, you know, they're, you try your best to like take it for what it's worth and to improve. And so I made like quite a few actually changes, you know, I don't know, some you may have noticed, some you may have not. And, you know, I really think that that's why this year we over doubled our attendance to over 12,300 people. I think it's 12,400 something. And, um, you know, we have a lot. I get so many emails. It's like so, so uh, amazing. And I want to thank you so much for that. And, uh, yeah, so um, I'm just so excited for all this. And, you know, I want to give up out some prizes uh, right now. So uh, is that a good time, Pete, to give out the prizes? Do I get to win? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Why not, man? Why not? You're a good guy. Okay. I'm going to win the prize. All Go right. Ahead. So let's see. We've got, what do we have here? Yeah. Okay. So um, thanks to our friends at uh, Precision Hydration. I'm just going to put on me for now. We have, um, you know, this really cool hat, Precision Hydration. It's actually really light. It's like a trucker hat style so it's like pretty thin i should probably take no i don't want to take it out because i want to keep it new for you all but it's pretty cool um so here it is and i want to now ask a question and have you guys answer um so this <laughs> you're gonna like this pete how many times and pete please look uh for the answer too how many okay. times was pete on tennis summit 2020 including the live stream so how many times was pete on the summit I find that like the answers just all come at once. Oh. I think Richard has it. Yeah. I just want to make sure because each time I've done prizes, people are like, no, no, I said it first. So it looks like Richard, well done, sir. 
Yeah. I believe it, sir. So Richard, Richard, great job. So um, just please email me at Mirabon at tennisfiles.com. Uh, I'm just putting my, my email here. Mirabon at tennisfiles.com. Congrats, Richard. Good job. Okay. So the next one that we have here is a very nice water bottle from precision hydration trying to put the full screen here it's uh you know it's it's good for oh i got a little dark here it's good for um trying to get your hydration on obviously and i'm um, giving this away too so some fun little prizes and uh this one is actually a good one i th i think you know i don't want to brag but who won the 2000 us open on the men's side <whistles> pete do you know pete do you know I don't think so. Well, I Googled it. <laughs> I have a couple guesses, but I'm not sure. A lot of people Googling right now. Misha, good try, but no. Aha. All right, let's see. Do we have any other people? Oh, my gosh. This this graphic is amazing, by the way. You see that? <laughs> that yeah. Up. Cool, Tate. That so, was gonna be my guess. That's so well done. Actually, guys, so Ken, nice try, but actually I believe that Murat Safin defeated Pete Sampras in yes. that. And yeah. when I saw that match, I thought that was the changing of the guard. I thought that dude was going to just destroy, but his his downfall, you know what his downfall was? Um, I don't know. Girlfriend? <laughs> no, no girlfriend. He had like a million girlfriends. That was the problem. He was like, he was, he just loved life and loved partying and it, he's kind of like the Nick Curios. He's kind of like Curios a little bit. Yeah, a little bit like Curios. That's true. So Tate, send me an email. Did you win already? I feel like you won once. But anyway, send me an email at Mir mirabon at tennisfiles.com. Uh, now I want to give away, where is it? So these are fantastic. And wow, I think there's so 15 tablets here. Okay. Uh, of like hydration tablets at the 500 level, which is pretty solid. And so um, these are excellent. I have actually used these, um, to, you know, when I play tennis, I put them in water and it's really good to hydrate, hydrate you and, you know, provide the sodium that you need. And so we're giving away one of these 15 tablets in here. I hope you can focus here. And so I'm going to ask the question here. Um, who won the 2000 U.S. Open on the women's side? Do, 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 do. I, I I have a guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Tracy Austin, bro. <laughs> did, did somebody get? I think somebody might have got it. Uh, I don't think so. Oh yeah, someone did. Yep, yep, yep. You got I'm it. Double checking because I already have got a dispute here for the other one. So is this the first one? No, Ken, it's not Peter Freeman. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody said Venus a couple. Sorry, times. sorry, sorry, right. sorry. Oh no, my gosh, how many? Geez, Patrick. that's the problem with chat. Sorry. Who Tate did you see? Who? Tate. Wait, was Tate? Wait, where's Tate at? He's above. He's above. Got to scroll back up. Are you sure? Because I see. I see uh, Mustafa. Is that? Do you see Mustafa winning? Oh, oh, Mustafa got. Yes, I think he was the first. I think he was the first higher up. Yep, he yeah. was even higher up than those guys. Yeah, because I'm seeing like after yeah. my comment, Serena, Serena. Yeah. Great. Okay, so Mustafa, well done. Nice. So please, uh, please send an email at mirabonatennisfiles.com. Sorry, I knew that. What's that? I knew that one. Yeah, you knew it. Okay, nice. I did. Mm -hmm. You did. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you know it all, you know, the tennis champs, you know, the, the old school music. What do you not know? So crazy. I know, it all. I know it all. All right. So, and by special request, um, I am going to give away one special pronunciation, one all access pass. Okay. Uh, somebody, what? Yeah. And somebody asked for this and I'm going to do it for this summit. And uh, this is uh, going to be a nice one. So everyone get ready and I'm going to like take as much time as I need to find the correct winner, you know, for this one. But the question is how many sets was last year's U S open on the men's side? U S open. How many sets was it on the men's side? Yep. For the final. 
Yes, for the final. I'm sorry. For the final. Yep. Championship match. Nope. You sending me a text, Pete? <laughs> no. Somebody got it. Five sets, Cameron. Carmen. Carmen. Oh no, I see I see Tony Robinson. I see Jai. I see geez. No, you know what, Pete? Uh, you know, it's everything comes fast, but I see uh, Zorana. Do you see Zorana? You see her up there? Sorry, I'm making you scroll like this. Zorana. So you see how Mustafa says thanks, mate, and then you got the eyes from yeah, I, it's weird how this it's like the things come in late. Or they something. come in late. They just I think when people like type all at once, you know. I see Oscar. We're just is verifying. It? This is like bingo, guys. Tate was there. God, a lot of things came in. So Tanya. We gotta get this right. Who Zorana? Yep, Zorana's way up. There. Yep, you're right. Zorana, what well, well done. You're well good. Done. You're high. Djokovic. You know, All right. Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, Craig O'Shaughnessy style. So, Zorana, send me a, an email at mirbon at tennisfiles.com and uh, we'll hook you up there. Wow. Um, okay. Well, I think that's that it. What? You have one more prize? Do you want? Okay. If, if Pete what? asked me, I'll deliver. Pete, do you want me to give another prize away? Do you want me to give another AAP? Yeah, I want what a p what all access pass. pass. Yes, yes. Hold on, one more. All right, guys, here it is. Drum roll. Oh yeah. May or may not be. I may or may not be Googling a question that I'm going to ask. <laughs> okay. So I've picked my, I don't know if I should say this. If, if I had put my credit card and never mind, I'm not going to say that. But anyway, my birth year uh, is going to be the topic of this question. Oh, yes. And so the question, 2018. what? 2018. You're born in 2018. That's right. Fresh. With this Fred gray Dave. mismatched every anyway, uh, the question, everybody, for one more all access pass to this year's summit, mm. okay, which is gonna be amazing for you, is who won the 1985 Wimbledon Championships on the women's side? Oh. Oh, you thought you knew it. I thought you knew it. Women's <laughs> side, 1985, Wimbledon champion. I know who I'm going to guess then. Yeah? Don't say it. I'm Don't not. Spoil it, mate. Don't ruin it. Oh, I think I see it. I think oh I see it. Oh, my gosh. They streamed in again. Who did you say first? Uh, wait, I got to scroll up again. This is insane. Like, we get so many. Let's see. Okay, I see. Do I see? Do you see this? Yep. Lachlan, the two time winner. We just emailed you an ebook, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's fine. Take so, it. Uh, Lachlan, you know, Lachlan enjoys it because, or uh, deserves it because we were originally going to ship him uh, a book, uh, Giada Storman's book uh, on the ball. And we couldn't because of these crazy restrictions or what whatnot that um, you got to let me know about for shipping. Um, I forget if Lachlan is in Australia or South Africa, but in any case, you know, we had to ship in, uh, send him an ebook. But now Lachlan wins the all access pass. So, congrats, Lachlan. Please send me an email at mirbon at tennisfiles.com. In fact, I have your email. So, congratulations. Just, just email me anyway. Nice. <laughs> Well so, done. so well done, mate. And I just want to, you know, a couple of things to cap off. First of all, you know, I want to encourage you, uh, if you haven't yet, you know, I think it's a great opportunity to upgrade to the all access pass. Um, we are, you know, Pete is giving away some amazing bonuses, three bonuses, incredible. Um, today, tonight, was it tonight only Pete? Tonight or? only. Okay. 30 day tennis technique and fitness challenge. The seven day serve challenge and yeah. the seven day forehand challenge. And you can send me your videos and, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good gift. I will tell you right away. 
even the ability to just send one video to Pete and having him change, you know, give a tip. Like, honestly, I would pay like a lot for that because, you know, it means you're getting tips from a great coach who's been in the game, has been the Georgia USPTA, was it, pro, pro of the year? Yeah, the USTA pro of the year in Georgia. Georgia. Uh, but yeah, I mean, not to, not, to, not to brag or nothing, but I actually had a lot of people who have purchased the, the challenge, like Ken Ro Rosenberg, who's on tonight, who is just like taking full advantage. He's like spent every single day, all 28 days, he's been there. Then videos, but after his first critique, he's like, "This is worth it right here on day one." So, you gotta try for sure, for sure. So, um, you know, I highly encourage you. And actually, um, that offer, well, the offer for Pete's bonuses is closing tonight, and then also um, access to be able to even get it is closing uh, Wednesday at midnight. And um, so, I highly encourage you to get that. But you know, also very importantly, I just want to thank everybody uh, from the bottom of my heart, as well as all the coaches. Uh, for coming on to Tennis Summit 2020. You know, this is the last live stream for the summit, but it certainly won't be the last <laughs> while Pete is juggling and outdoing me here. He's more entertaining. Won't be the last live stream I do. I uh, really enjoyed it and I enjoyed all the participation um, from everybody and the questions and everything. And so I'm going to keep doing that. <clears throat> but it's been a great summit. And uh, thanks for all your emails. Keep sending me them uh, about, you know, how you thought about the summit. And I'll probably reach out later on. Um, to get, you know, your thoughts, maybe in like a, you know, very quick uh, answering a couple of questions about the summit to help me for next year, because the reason why the summit double over doubled in, in numbers and uh, why it improved a lot is because of your comments last year. So I don't mind, you know, any comments like, oh, this session wasn't good, or I wish it had this and this, or I wish that the format is, this, you know, such and such. I, I welcome that because my goal is to improve this event every single time. So um, I just want to thank you all. Thank you, Pete, uh, for being a great friend of the summit and a great friend of tennis. All the hard work you're doing, just amazing stuff. And uh, thank you, everybody. Oh, HJ, you guys are a great combo. I love hearing that. Um, I'll just highlight some people. Monica, thank you for an absolutely awesome summit. <clears throat> Isabel, thank you very much. Uh, Kenneth, that's that's not nice, Kenneth. <laughs> Pete, Pete, we're, we're going we're gonna. to get that solved or that resolved. is hysterical it's fine but anyway um thank you so much guys and girls and everybody you know it's it's been a blast and uh yeah i mean it's really mind-boggling to be honest like over twelve thousand people it's insane so anybody anyway everybody get the all access pass um you know with pete's link and you get the bonuses and uh also you know check out tennis on tennis con coming out later this year uh anything else pete that you want to say to everybody Will you please just buy the pass? Oh. Can't you see the boy needs you to buy the pass? Is that an invitation of somebody? That, that's like Chris Farley. Uh, there's like Adam Sandler was like the the uh, paper boy or something like that, or like he wanted to sit sit somebody's house. I don't know. That, that's my Chris Farley impression. And uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Thank you. I thought you were actually Grady from Sanford and Son. No, that really? was Farley. Chris Bay, yeah. Please buy the boys pass. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I love it. So uh Pete, we'll be doing more impressions together, maybe in private, maybe in public. But anyways, everybody just be Not safe. Private, guys. <laughs> private? No, all public. Everybody be safe. Keep practicing, keep improving your tennis game, keep improving one percent each day. If you do that, then you're gonna improve yourself 37 times from the start of the year. If you do that for a year, that's, yeah, that's, that's math and calculation. So just keep, keep up, uh, you know, the good spirits and the positivity and the mindset, um, take control of your mind and you can do amazing things. And I uh, really, really appreciate it. Everybody. I won't keep droning on. I'll let you enjoy your night, but um, thank you. Hope you had a great tennis summit 2020, get the all access pass, watch the videos uh, and we'll see you again soon. Um, I'll be sending you, uh, more stuff and emails and, uh, you know, about everything and, um, we'll be talking again soon. So all the best. Thank you, Pete and be yeah. well. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>